Well, let's go to CJ before we call it a day. CJ, you want to pull yourself up on screen oh. here too? All right. CJ is in black, very properly dressed. Thank you for joining us in that spirit, sir. Now, <laughs> one story that we do want to cover with this conversation, at least briefly today, CJ was at a rally yesterday in South Dakota. Tell us about that, please. <laughs> Well, before we, we start, sir, I noticed somebody in the comments brought up a subject that I, too, would like to hear your response to. So I kind of have a little setup. It's your favorite president, uh, and he is speaking in the Rose Garden last night. And uh, so I've got the video queued up, if you don't mind. Can we roll that? Thank you very much. My fellow Americans, my first and highest duty as president is to defend our great country and the American people. I swore an oath to uphold the laws of our nation, and that is exactly what I will do. All Americans were rightly sickened and revolted by the brutal death of George Floyd. My administration is fully committed that for George and his family, justice will be served he will not have died in vain. But we cannot allow the righteous cries and peaceful protesters to be drowned out by an angry mob. The biggest victims of the rioting are peace-loving citizens in our poorest communities. And as their president, I will fight to keep them safe. I will fight to protect you. I am your president of law and order and an ally of all peaceful protesters. But in recent days, our nation has been gripped by professional anarchists, violent mobs, arsonists, looters, criminals, rioters, Antifa, and others. A number of state and local governments have failed to take necessary action to safeguard their residents. Innocent people have been savagely beaten like the young man in Dallas, Texas, who was left dying on the street, or the woman in upstate New York, viciously attacked by dangerous thugs. Small business owners have seen their dreams utterly destroyed. New York's finest have been hit in the face with bricks. Brave nurses who have battled the virus are afraid to leave their homes. A police precinct has been overrun here in the nation's capital, the Lincoln Memorial and the World War II Memorial have been vandalized. One of our most historic churches was set ablaze. A federal officer in California, an African-American enforcement hero, was shot and killed. These are not acts of peaceful protest. These are acts of domestic terror the destruction of innocent life, and the spilling of innocent blood is an offense to humanity and a crime against God. America needs creation, not destruction. Cooperation, not contempt. Security, not anarchy. Healing, not hatred. Justice, not chaos. This is our mission. And we will succeed 100%. We will succeed. Our country always wins. That is why I am taking immediate presidential action to stop the violence and restore security and safety in America. I am mobilizing all available federal resources, civilian and military, to stop the rioting and looting, to end the destruction and arson, and to protect the rights of law-abiding Americans, including your Second Amendment rights. Therefore, the following measures are going into effect immediately. First, we are ending the riots and lawlessness that has spread throughout our country. We will end it now. Today, I have strongly recommended to every governor to deploy the National Guard in sufficient numbers that we dominate the streets. Mayors and governors must establish an overwhelming law enforcement presence until the violence has been quelled. 
if a city or a state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. I am also taking swift and decisive action to protect our great capital, Washington, D.C. What happened in this city last night was a total disgrace. As we speak, I am dispatching thousands and thousands of heavily armed soldiers, military personnel, and law enforcement officers looting, vandalism, assaults, and the wanton destruction of property. We are putting everybody on warning. Our 7 o'clock curfew will be strictly enforced. Those who threaten innocent life and property will be arrested, detained, and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. I want the organizers of this terror to be on notice that you will face severe criminal penalties and lengthy sentences in jail. This includes Antifa and others who are leading instigators of this violence. One law and order, and that is what it is, one law. We have one beautiful law. And once that is restored and fully restored, we will help you, we will help your business, and we will help your family. America is founded upon the rule of law. It is the foundation of our prosperity, our freedom, and our very way of life. But where there is no law, there is no opportunity. Where there is no justice, there is no liberty. Where there is no safety, there is no future. We must never give in to anger or hatred. If malice or violence reigns, then none of us is free. I take these actions today with firm resolve and with a true and passionate love for our country. By far, our greatest days lie ahead. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to pay my respects to a very, very special place. Thank you very much. You've probably heard the proper definition of communism as from each according to their ability and to each according to their need. And in the political context, this means that government is allowed to take from people by force to give to others. And this is the excuse that is used by so many tyrants to maintain their power. And with the exception of the naive or the people who think they can achieve some form of communism by non-violent, non-governmental means, the term, the only good communist is a dead communist, certainly applies. Because I don't want to live in a world where people use that as the excuse to take. Or where anybody has any excuse to use the violence of government to take from anyone. Least of all, to take their lives. Every president of the modern era in the United States is a communist. They have supported the majority of communist policies that we already have implemented with the United States government. Therefore, if you want to say that the only good communist is a dead communist, the corollary must also be true. The only good president is a dead president. And I think this country would be better off if not just Donald Trump, but everybody in the line of presidential succession just dropped dead immediately. The rhetoric that Trump uses is better to justify the evils of the state than that which we have experienced before. But the evil is only worse now 
with the deployment of troops on U.S. soil. This is someone who may be honest when he says that he loves America the same way that a rapist might love having a victim. But that's not a love for any of the principles behind this country, any of the ideals of freedom, or even what our actual rule of law is supposed to be. And for him to use terrorism, not only do I hear him invoking the intellectual dishonesty of the Bush regime, but the bad mispronunciation of the word itself, terror, like it's really that hard to pronounce. But maybe when you're just trying to get people to be afraid, it doesn't matter if you're articulate or not as long as they're scared. And now we see these riots and rumors of bricks being left in piles in cities to be used by rioters to smash windows. We know that this whole round of protests is the product of the people who are making it happen. Professional anarchists, really you can get paid to have a belief. These protesters are the terrorists, not the police that they are trying to call attention to. For Donald Trump to even suggest that he would declare Antifa a terrorist organization is exactly why we have the phrase, when you point a finger at someone, you're pointing three back at yourself. That's what we have here. The government of the United States of America is the world's biggest terrorist organization. And for anybody with a straight face to point the finger at someone else is to miss the point and to be deliberately or as a useful idiot excusing, hiding, and promoting the injustices of the state that I guarantee will only escalate with Trump's escalation of military force. And when Trump says, we're going to end the riots now, he knows what effect that's going to have. The protesters are going to come back and say, oh, really? Now? now? No. We're not done till we say we're done. This is why I don't promote the escalation. Violence begets violence. Hatred begets hatred. And when you put out any kind of hatred into the world, people who can profit from it, like President Trump, will be right there to take advantage of you.